we're going to come up to the top and go to settings right here at the top. So you got bake and then settings. And then at the top, we want to make sure that, uh, you know, a lot of this default is probably going to work uh, pretty well. Um, we do want to go make sure, you know, depending on what, you, if you're going to a game engine or Maya, you want to make sure you're using OpenGL or DirectX. We're going to be using OpenGL and that's what Maya defaults in the viewport. Um, we also can turn on uh, per pixel by normal. Click that on. And then we're going to open up the normal for mesh because that's what we're doing, making a normal app. And then we're also making an ambient occlusion for mesh too. So these are the two maps we're going to make. So we're opening up those boxes. As you can see, all the other maps have different settings too, but we're not going to get into that. So, you know, when it makes a normal map, this is what it's going to name. It's going to name whatever that object is and then put norm at the end. Anti-aliasing. This is going to help clean up so it doesn't look so pixelated. It's going to add some anti-aliasing. Uh, so for speed purposes, I'm going to set this to two by two. If you want a little bit better quality, you can set it higher, but just understand that this takes longer to render if you set it higher. So it's just, you're just going to have to sit there and wait for a longer period of time, but your quality will come out better. For speed purposes, I'm going to go for two by two. Uh, tangent space is good. Uh, again, type is OpenGL. And then we're going to go down to ambient occlusion from mesh. Here, this is what's going to name the map. Um, pretty much everything here is default anti-acing. I'm going to do again. I'm going to set that to two times, and then um, articulation. Uh, how well uh, it's going to smooth it by. I usually set that instead of linear. I set that to or none. I just usually set that to smooth. And then if you want a little bit quality, more quality. Again, ambient occlusion. If you remember uh, last time, the more rays or samples. So think of uh, rays as samples. The more samples you give it, the better the quality. But again, it takes longer to render along with the anti-aliasing. So you usually set this to about 128. You can add 256, but understand for speed purposes, uh, I'm not going to crank it up that, that high. But if you do want to go to 256, you're more than welcome to, or even higher. You are going to get better quality, but it's just going to take longer to do it. So I'll put that back to 128. And pretty much, if you want to get into more of those types of parameters, um, you can always go back to the documentation and kind of scroll through here and figure out what the settings are for each one. So again, always look at this information. Oh, went away. There we go. And I make that disappear. All right, so now we are ready to bake. Um, so we're going to go to the top here, and we're going to hit this big red button at the top. And I'm also going to bring over my menu. You're going to see what it does in the background in this directory as it works. So, oh, one thing I did, forgot to do, um, to tell you before you hit the bake is... You want to make sure before you hit the bake button, you select the tire LP. So the low poly that you want everything to bake to or bake, uh, uh, bake, yeah, bake to. You want to make sure that is selected, then hit the bake and then it exports. And as you can see, it takes it to uh, a little DOS prompt and it will do its calculations in a separate program. And let's bring up that directory again. And you can see all the extra things that it did. It made all these different OBJs and exported it into this program that's calculating. Right now, it just finished a normal map. So there it is. So if I double click on it, and there it is, there is my normal map that just got baked. And then now, as I was talking, it just finished the ambient occlusion. So, if I double click on that, there's my ambient occlusion map right there. So, it does a pretty good job. It's pretty quick with the settings I used. Uh, again, if you crank them up a little bit, it will definitely take longer. Close that out. But you can see all the extra map 
all the extra things it did to bake out that map. So that's how you use, in a nutshell, how to use the uh, Substance Maya Toolkit to bake out your normal map and ambient inclusion map relatively quickly. Uh, now let's bring both of these back in the Maya so you can see the result on the low poly model. So I'm going to close this out because we don't need this Windows prompt anymore. And I'll push this over to the side right now. I'm also going to get rid of the Substance Toolkit. I'm going to hit that little X, make that disappear. I'm going to go hide the uh, HP and Cage. So Control H. I want to make sure textures are seeable. So I'm pressing this little icon up here at the top. The checker says textured or pressing the six key. Um, now we're going to find the hyper shade and per perspective view. So it should be this fifth one down. Click it. I'll drag this little halfway point down. I'm going to go to textures. And I'm going to just going to take these two images right here and drag them over. So left mouse click, hold and drag over. There they are. I'm going to add a new shader to this object. So right click on the geometry. Uh, I'll just do assign new material and I'll do a blend. And I'll name that. I'm going to make sure that I didn't delete the history. Shame on me. Uh, I'll name that uh, tire shader. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the ambient occlusion into the bump mapping or the, uh, sorry, normal map into the bump mapping. So left mouse, middle mouse click, I should say. Oh, I didn't want to do it. Click on there and make sure the shader's up. Middle mouse click, hold and drag into the bump mapping. And there you go. It puts it in, but Maya doesn't know how to read it because it thinks it's a regular black and white image for a bump. So under use as bump, change it to tangent space normals. And there you go. And you can see, look at all that detail that we've got. It's pretty, pretty nice. The amount of detail we've got here. Uh, let's go back to this shader and I'm going to put the the uh, ambient occlusion into the diffuse of the shader. So right here, there's a diffuse option. So middle mouse click on that, drag it into diffuse, and there you go. And it's gone in there and it's kind of giving this extra little darkening into the grooves or the tread of the tire. And now let's bring the outliner back and I'm gonna bring in my High res, so to bring up my high res or high poly object, I'm going to select in the outliner. And you can see it's kind of grayed out because I hit it. I'm going to hit Shift H instead of Control H, and I'm going to bring it back, and I'm going to hit the Move tool and move it over, and I'm going to deselect it. So you can see from a distance, you know, we were able to relatively get a lot of that detail from the high res down to the low res with far less polys with the use of texture maps. So using the ambient occlusion and the normal map to bake out the detail from the high res to the low res onto UVs to drop our polycon. And this is, this is a common technique that's used in video games to get the illusion uh, that objects in the game engine are very high detailed or very and they're made out of many many polygons which they're not and this is a common technique that is used to achieve that so here you go that's how you do it hopefully you'll use it in uh, you will use it in your current project um, and good luck